Um, hello there. M my name is Stefan Alexiev. I'm from Bulgaria, a uh, small country in uh, Eastern Europe. We used to be for almost 45 years. We were under communist uh, regime. And uh, I grew up under uh, the <laughs> communist regime. Wood carving has uh, <coughs> thousands of years traditions in my country. Uh, we actually do not know really when it started. It, it, it looks like it's been there <laughs> forever. I, I actually um, went for a special art school uh, when I was in eighth grade. Kids who have interest in, in whatever uh, skill they w would like to, to pursue as a hobby or profession, they, they, they can go after eighth grade. You, you can go in any kind of professional school. We call them uh, technicums. Word, but uh, it, it, it is a professional school that will give you four years of uh, advanced education in certain professions. So I, after uh, my eighth grade, I went to uh, this um, art school, who was who um, was uh, uh, actually only four miles away from uh, my hometown. And I remember, like it was yesterday, that we were 45 people. Uh, we were the candidates, uh, you know, all kids after eighth grade. And we were there to, uh, for a drawing exam using only a piece of paper and a pencil. And we had to put there a, I remember it was an ancient Greek vase uh, and pyramid and a bowl. So you had to be kind of a, you had to have already in eighth grade, you have to have at least very good um, perspective of uh, um, where the, the piece are, how they uh, turn sh shadows and the lights and how they reflect light. So anyway, there were only eight uh, uh, open openings in the art school and uh, I was one of the lucky ones out of the 45 people, so I went to this uh, art school and for four years there, so from the, the ninth grade until the 12th grade, we study uh, art. Uh, we did a lot of drawings, we did a lot of painting, uh, we did a lot of work with the clay, we did a lot of work with um, epoxy, with a, and of course, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot carving. I mean, a lot. Uh, the first year we went really the basic, the basic uh, things that uh, you know how the type of carving that is, is here it is known as a chip carving. Uh, in my country, we call this a shepherd's carving because that's what we have over there. We have a lot of uh, tradition of uh, uh, when the shepherd is out there with the sheep or with the goats, he takes his pocket knife and he starts to play with his stick that uh, he finds in the woods. So it's basically just a chip carving with a, the pocket knife. 
So anyway, we started with that. That's a good base for you to start, you know, and kind of a have the feeling of the grain. That's the one of the important things from the very beginning is to feel that the grain and you know how it is, you know, with time, you just don't have to feel the grain anymore. You just, you look at the wood and you know where did the grain go. Um, so, <coughs> and then uh, slowly we started uh, using tools and chisels and we started with the, the sharpening which uh, unfortunately we used to use stones and you guys you know what a stone is it takes, it takes <laughs> forever and you hate it uh, but anyway that's one thing that you have to <laughs> get used to if if not you use a, uh, a wheel a uh, hard buffing wheel which uh, I do now. It saves a lot of time. At the time I was in the third year at the art school, I remember um, there was, um, oh, I'll go uh, a little bit back just to um, tell you how uh, the reason we, in my country wood carving is so popular and so kind of a uh, well developed is because my country was occupied by the uh, Turks for 500 years from the end of the, the 14th century to the end of the, the, the 19th uh, century so at the time while we were occupied by the Turks you know the, their you know Islamic people and they say uh, we want to build our, our mosque, you know, in stone. But you, you, the, the, the slaves, you are allowed to build your, your temples in wood because it is easy to burn. You know, if, if we get angry at you, it will be easy to go there and just put everything on fire. So, we never got any stone to work on, on in our churches, so we went with the wood. And, you know, years and uh, centuries later, we, <laughs> we had this uh, tremendous uh, tradition. I, I have here uh, one of the, the most amazing carving things i ever seen in the, the world, and uh, we have it. Okay, it's called the Raphael cross. It has two fa uh, two sides, and it's it is only the, the, this the, this tall. It, I think it's um, mm, probably thirty inches by well, let's say twenty inches. It is carved by one piece of wood, one piece only, and it has over 620 figures. It, it is a, a, a Bible scenes, and um, <coughs> you can see true. Uh, um, if you can do a little bit more zooming, I mean, if you can zoom, and yes, so actually, if you if you see the cross up close, you can see true. Um, it is so, it is so tiny, and they have columns, and he built he carved. Uh, buildings and columns and people and, and animals and each block is 
only inch and a half by inch and a half big. Here is a two of the squares of the of the the um, Raphael's cross, and you can see the. Can you zoom a little bit? All different. Uh, oh, this cross? Yeah, Raphael cross is probably an uh, inch and a half thick only. And you can see the people, uh, you have a tree there, and you have you know columns and, and uh, palaces and people, and that's uh, uh, Jesus here, you know, he's uh, coming in Jerusalem on the donkey. Right there, and all that thing is is that big. <laughs> no, probably he used I don't know what uh, needles or it's a big mystery. <laughs> I spend hours and hours just just staring at. The piece. It, uh, it's been carved uh, 200 years ago by um, uh, one, uh, the name of the, the monk. Uh, his name is Raphael. And he spent 12 years to carve that cross from one piece of wood. And the picture is not all that good to present. I mean, if you just uh, go and see, see it, um, uh, I've been, I mean, I, I've seen the, the thing uh, probably 20 times. And, and every time I go there and I see it, it looks unreal. It looks unreal. For me, the, the, this is the, the best carving piece that I've ever seen. Probably I have to roam the, the, uh, the world one more time. They, 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 they keep it in, uh, in a glass box. And that's all you see. You go there and you see these glasses probably <laughs> inch thick. And you know, it has all, all kind of a, a lot of alarms there. I was uh, telling you the story how I was in my third year. And this church in the town that I was studying caught fire, and uh, uh, part of the altar got burned. And then they went, uh, they came to us, the priest, and, and they say, we ask you, uh, we have pictures and stuff, we would like you guys to recreate the, the altar. And that was my huge, big, uh, adventure. Uh, I had the, the honor to carve one of the panels, which was uh, probably uh, like 40 by 30 inches uh, panel with a floristic uh, ornaments in a big ancient lion in the, the middle. Um, and <clears throat> so after that, uh, um, you know, I went to the army, and then uh, after the, the, the army, I went uh, to study my other uh, hobby. It was uh, geography, so I went to in the University of Sofia, and then mm, I became a geography teacher. And then I I was a teacher for six years uh, in my country uh, until I had the opportunity to come here in the state. And when I came here in, in America, my English was not my strongest skill. So 
So I said, I'm going to try to find a work with, uh, with carving, with wood carving. So until my English gets well and better. So one day, we just uh, decided, me, uh, uh, my wife and I, we uh, went out just to kind of uh, to check the, 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 the water, if it's good for swimming. But uh, I had uh, two job offers in, in one day. And that was August uh, 1999. Uh, you guys, you remember how the economy was back there. It was good. And anyway, I find a job in Kindle Furniture. And that's how um, I met Bill Blumendale, who was my supervisor for 10 years. I spent 10 wonderful, 10 amazing years in Kindle. And I learned a lot from Kindle too. Uh, I learned how to increase my speed, which was, which actually was n n n never a issue uh, when I was studying carbon. The speed was n not a issue. It was attention of the detail. You make sure that it, it is done, and then you go. But in Kindle, because you're in production, that helped me a lot with my, with my speed. And kind of a, I became I became more rational kind of a carver. Uh, helped me not to waste time, uh, you know, with nonsense. You probably. You've seen it, but uh, you know it's uh, it's unfinished, uh, kind of a drawer for a small chest. Now, why would a piece like that be rejected? Is there? Is there uh, because water? probably. Oh yeah. The oval is not perfect. The the oval here is not perfect. Yeah. And I have here a, a small finish. Uh, that that's how usually uh, the pieces are after they are you know all sanded with a. 420 sandpaper and uh, oh, one thing. When I was in the, the carving school, <laughs> the, the sandpaper was big no-no. It was completely forbidden and I agree with that uh, because in Kindle, they we, we did a um, reproduction of old pieces. So old pieces has to, uh, has to kind of a, um, to look worn out a little bit, you know, from usage. That's why we were allowed to use a sandpaper, which also, you know, helped us with the speed and everything. But actually, if you carve, if you're, you know, real carver, you do not use the same paper, and you know the reason is because if you have a razor sharp chisel and you do one cut, the shine it was n n never no same paper will recreate the shine of the razor sharp wood carving chisel. That's it. That's my baby here. I did this from a chunk of wood. And uh, 
It's a leg for uh, so-called cut water chair that Kindle in Kindle we did um, for a uh, hundred years anniversary. And I did the the two legs. And it took me a week for each one. So that 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 was actually the 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 uh the model that they used for the machine carver, which did the, the, the machine carving, and then they came to us and we, you spent one day on, on like, to make it real nice. Also, another uh, things that, uh, I would like to kind of share with you uh, in order for you guys to kind of increase your, I mean, I don't know uh, in what level each one of you is, you beginners or intermediate or, or advanced covers, but um, for the beginners, uh, I have one advice that really um, <coughs> helped us is you take a piece of paper and you draw. You, you draw everything. You draw the, 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 this camera over there. You just, you start drawing. Everything, everything you see. It will help you immensely with uh, just uh, the way it works um, kind of a, in an interesting way because all the great sculptures in history, um, you know, they started uh, as painters. They later they become sculptors and carvers. But, but you start with this. Uh, I did a American style <laughs> carving <laughs> and. Uh, I did this uh, for my uh, new boss and uh, Jeff, and uh, he is uh, extremely happy. And he was uh, very generous to uh, to let me have it for tonight. I have to give it back. Uh, my crown jewel of uh, wood carving is um, two years ago. Uh, I did a one cross here. It's called the, the, the family cross. And it's um, it kind of a, came from a idea. They, the, the, uh, in the beginning, they wanted a Indian totem pole to be outside. And what Indian totem pole represents, it's a presentation of the family. Usually you have, you know, like an eagle, which is the father, and then all the sculptures. Um, on the bottom of the totem pole are the, the wife and all the kids. So the family was a very, very Irish family that had 11 children. So I said, how about this? How about if uh, I do a Irish cross and we do the, the same idea and we put each square with the same uh, idea of this, of the Bulgarian cross. And we do each square will be a child of this family. So anyway, the cross was a, uh, a birthday gift for the child number seven, which you can see her right in the middle. She's a flutist. She plays a flute. And we started from the bottom with the oldest child went 
way to the top with the youngest. And the horizontal bar, we saved it for the parents, which they, in their uh, late 80s, and actually child number seven, it was her 50th birthday. So in she was number seven, kind of a special kind of a child for the Irishman, so she was the special child. And we did this uh, chair, I mean, excuse me, this cross for her as a birthday gift. And um, so actually the cross also has two, uh, two sides. And you can see the basis, the sides, from uh, a little out. Uh, okay, this is one side of the horizontal bar, but then you see this is the other side. So you can see that this is the, the father, and he had five bronze, star, bronze stars from World War II, and he's a uh, uh, doctor, he likes to play uh, basketball and tennis, and he's a very Irish guy. You can see the Irish symbol right there. And the mother, she wanted, oh, I just want a cardinal, and a rose, and a turtle. Said, okay, no problem. And then we started with uh, each uh, child from the bottom. You know, you can see each uh, uh, Rectangular has you know two faces. It's, it starts in everyone. They send me emails with quotations with the, their favorite hobbies, work images. So we combined all that. We combined and we put it on, uh, on that cross and kind of a created this uh, uh, thing, kind of a really, really cool thing. And and that's, that, that, that's her in the middle with, uh, with her playing flute and the happy 50th, and then m m m more symbols. Uh, more symbols. Uh, she's a piano teacher.